number 20 was all about Robin Van Persie and if it broke a few hearts, who cares? Welcome to the back for Iconic Moments Premier League Edition. In a sensational 24 million deal, Robin Van Persie's transfer from Arsenal to Manchester United shakes up the Premier League, marking one of the most headline-grabbing moves in football history. So, uh, just a little bit of background for this uh, transfer. Um, RVP was basically Arsenal captain at this point and um, one of my favourite players. Uh, I start, When I started watching Arsenal, he was somewhere like, like he was the star striker but he still didn't make a huge mark in our, uh, you know, in our team. Um, but just the way he played, um, just just his presence. Uh, I even liked the way he talked in interviews. He he was there, you know. He was sort of like that player, which from the Invincibles took us to another generation. Uh, was like supposed to be the the like the Henri region or something, at least for me. And um, <clears throat> that that 2010 11 season was the one which where we certainly saw the best of his. Um, where he scored 18 Premier League goals and then the 2011-12 season his last season for Arsenal was clearly like one of the best solo performances uh, by any Premier League striker and him scoring um, 30 goals in, in the season where Arsenal finished fourth. So clearly, I mean, like having one of the best strikers, probably the best striker in the Premier League at that point of time and not even like, you know, finishing third was something embarrassing and something which was probably in RVP's mind. So then that asshole listened to his little kid or whatever the fuck he said. And um, yeah, there was sort of like a fight between City and United, but he picked City for a good reason. Uh, sorry, he picked United for good reason because they had SAF and, you know, City had just won the title and Alex Ferguson wanted someone who could like spearhead the attack and that's it. That was it. And he scored, goes on to score 26 Premier League goals again and probably single-handedly take Man United to the title. And that was like, that was it. So that is the moment which has given me a lot of uh, anxiety. Um, what are you, I wanted to know your thoughts on this, Nihal. Really, I thought like uh, the moment of anxiety was when he got the guard, guard of honour. Yeah. At Emirates. <laughs> Uh, everything that, that everything you laugh now right. you laugh now we'll laugh at the end of this season we're in watch second last weekend at OT love it <laughs> bro you're jet lag it's gonna bro. be a reverse it's gonna here. be a reverse guard of honor this time around <laughs> um, uh, yeah but the you know, the interesting part about this is there's a little bit of hate inside of me and a little bit of uh, you know uh, surprise element as well at that point of time I'm talking about my psychology then he yeah. did not have the greatest seasons with Arsenal you know over the 10 years that he was with Arsenal he ate 10 mm-hmm. years whatever he had very average seasons He so if I had to go over stats um, he started in the yeah. 20, 2004 2005 season and uh, consecutive seasons he scored 5 goals 5 goals 11 goals 7 goals 11 goals 9 goals 2010-11 season he scores 18 2011-12 he scores 30 for the first time o- uh, over 20 and then he's off so it's n- by no means did he fire it up at uh, Arsenal he, it, it was a very injury ridden period for him and Arsenal stuck by him it broke my heart how he didn't even consider anything and he just left uh, once he hit thir- the, the you know 30 digit mark for the first time um, what are your thoughts AJ on this? I think I want to bring in Arsene Wenger on it. Uh, I mean, he's he's one of those guys who uh, is notorious for, you know, having extra loyalty towards his players. And likes of RVP, Nasri, uh, Sanya, Klishi to a certain extent, uh, kind of led to his demise in an Arsenal, in the Arsenal dugout. Like, he was, he's one of those, tra- he was one of those traditional managers who would trust his players to the court, protect them do whatever uh, it needs, you know, for the team to stay together. And then these players kind of like, you know, had one or two great seasons. They just saw the money and went after the oil riches that, that were offered. Obviously not in the case of United. United was a completely different ball game, but like for other ones. And like for, for RVP, right? This dude never played for Arsenal, as you said, in the initial part of his career. And he was always on the injury table and he had like one or two good seasons and then he ran away listening to his inner child. And 
I mean, for me, it was really painful, of course. Like, you know, the God of Honor, it still haunts me, like many other moments. But uh, again, I, I, that's why I commend Kane, right? Players like Kane, they didn't, I mean, they stuck with Tottenham and they kind of have a legacy. Nobody invites Van Percy to any of the stadiums. Like, he makes visits at OT, but like, yeah, whatever. People are like, yeah, you won us one title in, like, whatever. And he's never invited to Emirates ever again, no matter how much he cra- cribs about stuff, how much he placates the Arsenal fan base. So players like these, they never leave a legacy. Yeah, they might have won a trophy or two, but uh, he soon declined after joining uh, United, right? One good season, and then he was back in the trenches. So, yeah, he deserved what he got. He got a title, and then he got back to being uh, worthless as he was. Yeah, he's welcome to the Trafford. We stole your chant. And... Uh, he can come to Old Trafford whenever he wants because he got a sure, good opportunity. Keep him, keep him as much as you want. Keep him. Nihal keep is, him, keep his son, keep his daughter, whoever you want. <laughs> Let them yeah. play for your team. Nihal, is he like a semi-legend or I would say an iconic player for Man United? I mean, after thought of like Ferguson retiring, he gave, he, he, let, he enabled Ferguson to retire at a high. What more do you want? Like from a 24 million signing, right? Like, and uh, you know he he spent his peak season with us to your point like he was just hitting peak he scored 30 goals only once before that and then he repeated that same thing that was the only differential between like man city and man united because we lost a title on goal difference and if you recall uh, ferdinand widek and i think evra they were talking about it after that game against sunderland like when aguero scored the goal Ferguson came back to the dressing room and he said that we are never going to lose a title like this ever again. I'm going to I'm going to solve this problem. And uh, he he did it rightfully and I think if he went to City it would have been a different story altogether. We would have been tied at 19 with Liverpool. Ferguson would have retired in a weird way. Uh number 20 was all about Robin van Persie and if it broke a few hearts, who cares? We got the number twenty. So. <laughs> his Sorry, number was also. He won number. many more hearts, so <laughs> it works. Yeah, his number was also number twenty. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Sid like Poetic, what, bro. It's meant to be. Like, should he should he have been sold? But I think he regressed pretty fast, so probably like a good transfer anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, for the amount of money that we bought him for and the impact that he delivered. I think it was totally worth it like very much bang for the buck like you look at the season right now right like you have so many highly paid players who are not doing shit so Van Persie is a legend in that sense and he won us the title our like most recent title which is not many very recent but that is a big achievement and like I don't think any United fan will have anything against Van Persie even though he regressed in the future seasons like he gave us that one last high with Alex Ferguson he gave Alex Ferguson that exit that he needed that he deserved so yeah man I think Van Persie is a pseudo legend at least if not more yeah if you look at uh, his recent interviews he's been talking about like how Arsenal never really offered him a contract I think that is mm. like, absolute bullshit that is no bullshit. I think he rejected a contract or no, something he, if you see his, like his interviews he's saying that like He's trying to explain why he moved. He says that like Arsenal never really offered me a contract and that is the reason that I had to make a decision of where I have to move. And I was also ambitious. I also wanted to win a Premier League. So I went to Man Man United, which is bullshit. The reason that he never got a contract is because he already had made his made his mind up. Um, so that is definitely yeah. there. Uh, the weird part is I don't know why Wenger agreed to it. This is probably one of the Wenger eras where Wenger was a big pussy in a way that like I, I remember like reading a news article where Alex Ferguson had called him and asked him that like and asked him about Van Persie and Wenger before that didn't want to sell him but after the phone call apparently he made a decision okay he wants to sell him so who cares either I don't understand Alex Ferguson has a phone ja hai, and uh, like <laughs> Wenger is basically yeah. like oh but if I guess called me <laughs> exactly bro early stage dementia bro <laughs> 